this is always highlighted as the statue that represents the legendary founders of Kiev. And so here it has been appropriated by protesters as a kind of uh, to augment the symbolism of their um, of their rebellion, right? So they're they're fighting for Ukraine. So the color, I think, highlights at least visual diversity of the protesters as opposed to the monochromatic uniformity of the riot police. You don't see the government forces or the riot police in this photo at all, which is kind of interesting. You just see the darkness behind fighting this this force. It is very apocalyptic in that sense. Well, I think it's it's the dramatic aesthetics, you know, that are evident in this in this slide. Uh, the number of times that you saw references to apocalyptic uh, fire and ice appeared in the title, uh, because it was taking this, these protests were taking place during winter as well, uh, and you just had these extraordinary contrasts of of color and form that, that made these you know very dramatic images and made them stand out in relationship to other protests. You know that might have been taking place in Turkey and Venezuela at the same time. Um, you know the quality of the aesthetic plays a really significant role in getting certain things up the visual news agenda, and and this is a good case, I think. When you're talking about balancing information with beauty, uh, in looking at maybe thousands of pictures, really from those uh, two months, it seemed like qu quite a challenge in terms of really striking that balance and being able to temper all this incredible symbolism and, and, and powerful and sensational imagery with, you know, trying to get, you know, the real, the, the, the meat of the story from an informational standpoint. Yes, that's correct. And in order to keep our readers engaged and to invite them into the stories, it was important to try and present a diversity of images every day. We saw quite a few of these types of images coming through where there'd be people painting around the square and so forth and um, you know it's just interesting obviously they're aware that this is a historical moment that they want to capture as an artist and it's refreshing from a reader's point of view to just get these various levels of um, perception that the people there are also seeing it's like you the reader has this has has one level of perception here and then you know you also get to see the artist uh, the artist uh, perception of it as well it's it's uh, really great just the fact that there's the cloud of smoke in there one imagines a photographer right in close in the midst yeah. of that cloud of smoke producing something like the first image in this edit and yet here we are standing way back you know with the scene seeing the buildings around it and we do really get a a sense of the construction of the image here and the construction of the scene. You know, one could imagine people maybe at other times in the square, uh, artists going out and doing that. I'm going to go out to the square today and I'm going to paint and, you know, and maybe you just show up and do it when it's like this too. That's the unexpected thing, right? There's always something to paint in the square. We, we saw quite a few of these types of images coming through where there'd be people painting around the square and so forth. And, um, you know, it's just interesting. Obviously, they're aware that this is a historical moment that they want to capture as an artist, and and you can go back and look at the coverage, and and you can see various people's interpretations through paintings in the square, and some of them, you know, it looked more like a Paris street scene, very festive, and some of them were very dark and apocalyptic, like this one. Yeah, I think that this this photograph offers a kind of a meta commentary um, on the on the art of photography as as an art of representation, because it is in an advice comparison between the new medium or the newer medium and the older one, of course. And I think it also highlights um, the point of view and the framing of any representation that we have in both cases. So. Um, the fact that there is a painter um, recording the scene um, in the older medium also brings our attention to the borders of the camera, you know, the frame, um, that we're cutting a fragment of reality by means of a lens. And uh, we're looking through that lens and we identify with the invisible photographer behind the lens 
Um, so so there, there's all these reminders that are, I think, um, are in this picture that beyond, beyond what it shows, but there are all these sort of commentaries that are directed at the viewer. I love this. It's a beautiful composition. <laughs> the number of times that from Ukraine people talked about this photograph looks like Hieronymus Bosch or it looks like a Bruegel or something like this. And here we have, you know, photographer taking image of painter, taking image of scene and, and so on. I mean, I find the painterly description generally very limiting when it comes to photographs and so on. But this plays nicely uh, on that point, I think.